Happy Thursday to you. Happy Thursday to you. I um I my name is Jean Sumner and I run a nonprofit called World Wellness Education. And our mission is to educate the world about how to stay well. And we do that in a number of ways. Um, we'll do educational seminars like this one. Uh, we share people's stories of going from diagnosis to vibrant health by changing their diet and lifestyle. And to tell you the truth, I don't think there's a disease out there that I haven't heard a story where someone healed it by changing their diet and lifestyle. Um, we also have uh, attend health and wellness fairs and um, we'll, we'll let our members know about health and wellness fairs. If you're interested in becoming a member, you can actually just put your first name and your email in the chat and I will add you as a member. Or you can go to worldwellnesseducation.org and click on the right hand side of the screen at the top and it, you will see um, uh, membership. Uh, so whichever is easier for you. Uh, another thing that we've done is we have a huge website, worldwellnesseducation.org. It includes all kinds of people's stories. It includes tons of healthy recipes. It includes information about my books. I've written four books that I'm gonna share with you today. Um, you can get a, a digital copy by going to the website and up on, up on the left-hand side, it'll say Jean's books. So my first book that I wrote is called 52 Tips to be Healthy. And 52 Tips to be Healthy is your really basic. This is for people who would never watch this seminar. This is for your friends and relatives that maybe you can get to eat a salad with that book. <laughs> the second book I wrote was Journey to Raw. And Journey to Raw is one change a week to add more raw food to your diet. There are institutions all over the United States that te teach people how to eat food that will really um, help them. And raw food is important in a lot of those programs. I actually ate raw for a year. Um, so that was an interesting time in my life. Fortunately, I lived in Florida because it would be really hard to eat raw today. Let me tell you, I want warm soup. So then I wrote, are you toxic? And the answer to are you toxic is yes. We have so many toxins that we're dealing with in our world. And we have to make sure we try and get the toxins out of us. They've recently done a study on the placenta of a newborn and found there's more than 255 chemicals in the placenta of a newborn in our country these days. So it's important to pay attention to that. And the uh, fourth one is finding joy because after what, writing about all those toxins, I had to find joy again. So that's one change a week to add more joy to your life, which is obviously important to your health and well wellness, the happier you are, the more joyful you are, the less stress is in your life and the less illness. So if you're interested in um, getting a, co a hard copy of the book, uh, you can do that by emailing me and I will, um, we can, we can talk about it and I can ship one to you. Um, my email address is gene at worldwellnesseducation.org. And I did put worldwellnesseducation.org in the notes. So you just have to say Gene at and you're, you're good to go with my email. So how did I get involved in wellness? Yeah, it's very interesting because my whole career, I worked in banking in, and in credit. And uh, in 2007, I was diagnosed with an incurable cancer, according to the medical industry. And so... I had to figure out how to make sure I stayed well. And as life would have it, things just kept popping into my life um, so that I started on this whole journey to learn how to stay well, how to build your immune system, uh, what devices are really beneficial, et cetera. So as I said, I first I went to vegetarian and then I, I actually became a raw Buddhist for a while. Other things that I did to make sure I stayed well were I enhanced my spirituality. I was exercising, only the exercising I did before was very hard on my body. And I switched to yoga and Tai Chi and walking, which is not hard on your body. 
then you had I had to learn about how did I get stress relief out of my out of my stress out of my life and I did that with um I think the mo- my most favorite thing was when I started um doing meditation because meditation just changes the way you look at the world it's just amazing if you're not doing meditation even for wellness meditation is so important and you can do 5 minutes a day and it will be beneficial. And all you have to do is sit down in your chair, shut your eyes, try not to think about anything except that you're breathing in and you're breathing out. And that's how hard meditation is. Everybody goes, I don't know how to do it. Well, that's how you do it. It's so simple. And you will start craving more time if you start with your five minutes. It's just, it's pretty amazing. I did a lot of detoxing during my journey. So um, juicing, you know, green juice, literally is um, very, very good for detoxing. And so every morning I have a glass of juice, you know, it's usually things like kale, Swiss chard, um, carrots, celery, cabbage. Those are some of the basics that I always start with. And juicing, juicing is, um, you know, when you tell somebody that you, you drink a juice of, of those vegetables instead of fruit juice like we're used to they kind of look at you like you're crazy but um i always tell people you know when i'm talking to a group i'll say how many of you are drinking coffee how many of you drink tea how many of you um ever have alcohol all of those things tasted yucky the first time you had them And it's amazing how your taste buds adjust. And, you know, that cup of coffee in the morning tastes so good now. Um, So if you if your taste buds can adjust to that, guess what? They can adjust to green juice, too. And I'll tell you what what I crave my green juice now. Um, A raw diet is very detoxing. Um, Colonics, uh, massage, chiropractic are all all help with detoxing. Um, other things that I did was oxygen therapy, um, pulse electromagnetic frequencies and, um, healing my gut. So now we're going to talk just about your immune system. There's lots of information in this presentation, you know, listen, something that strikes you, write it down because you're not gonna do everything I'm gonna suggest. I I wouldn't even want you to do that. Just add one little thing at a time um, because that's so much easier and it's not stressful and you might stick with it then. So as I mentioned, you know, a a diet high in fruits and vegetables, seeds and nuts or a whole food, whole food plant-based diet is really important. And I'll tell you that, you know, things like heart disease can be actually prevented and reversed. There's a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Esselstein, who he put together a study to see if he could quit just fixing heart problems with a stent or a, or a bypass or all those different surgeries you can have um, by just reversing uh, or by changing your diet. Well, he wasn't able to get clients for his study, except from the other cardiologists. And so a cardiologist wanted to do everything they could before they would hand these people over to the study. So he finally got 24 people um, in his study. And what he did was he, he did it sort of like Weight Watchers, where they had weekly meetings so they could, you know, share recipes and talk about their experiences of being on a whole food plant-based diet. Well, a whole, whole food plant-based diet is basically fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts. And when you say whole food, you want it as close to nature as you can get it. So the preference would be an apple over applesauce or something processed. So um, that, that is what a whole food plant-based diet is. And so he had 24 people in the study, six of them could not follow the diet and they dropped out. So eight, he followed 18 people for 20 years. One of the ladies that was in the 18 had been told to get her affairs in order because she didn't have very long to live. 
Um, another guy that was in the 18 couldn't walk from the parking lot and get into the doctor's office because he was his heart was that bad. And what he found was in 20 years, none of these people had any heart issues where in the six people that had not followed the diet, those six people ended out, um, one of them died, one of them had another heart surgery. And so that was it's pretty amazing to know that your diet can change, can keep you that healthy. I mean, I don't think we really pay attention as much as we should to what we put in our mouth. So, the other thing about fruits and vegetables and having them for your food source rather than, you know, the junk food and the meats that we all eat is that when you're not digesting food, your body has an opportunity to work on other things. And so fruits actually digest in 20 minutes. So that's pretty easy on your body and vegetables. Hey, Jean, sorry, I accidentally muted you. Jean? Sorry, I muted you. So you'll have to unmute yourself. Am I there now? Yes, you are. Sorry, everybody. I was trying to mute our newcomers. <laughs> Did I? Uh, when, do you know when I got muted? It was about 30 seconds ago. So Okay, so, so I'll just do the fruits, vegetables again. So digestion is really important in staying well, because if you're taking a long time to digest, your body doesn't have time to work on other things. And so the reason a whole food plant-based diet is so good for you is that fruit takes 20 minutes to digest, vegetables take 45 minutes to digest, and meats take 72 hours. So obviously, if you're eating fruits and vegetables um, more often than not, you, your digestive system isn't working so hard, so your body has time to heal. Um, so a whole food plant-based diet is eating a diet, a, a nutrient-rich diet and the rainbow of fruits and vegetables, lots of raw fruits and vegetables and organic whenever possible, lots of leafy greens like kale and Swiss chard, arugula, spinach, and lettuces. Juicing is also a great way to add additional nutrients, fruits and vegetables in a powdered form. You can buy those at the co-op or at any health and wellness store. Um, they will have organic powdered um, fruits and vegetables that you can like add to water or some of them are in capsules. And I've heard incredible stories about people who did not have a diet high in nutrients uh, and what changes it made to their, um, to their wellness and their immune system. You want to avoid processed foods, and processed foods are basically anything in a in a can, jar, box. So you want to eat whole foods, fresh foods whenever possible. And sometimes that's hard in Minnesota. I know it was a whole lot easier when I lived in Florida. It's a little harder here, but I'm still able to make juice every morning um, because I've found some good sources for organic vegetables, so I can make juice. Other things important to your immune system are exercising regularly. Um, walking works. If you get one of your Fitbits and you work it, do your 10,000 steps a day, um, that's going to be really helpful. And um, walking is actually the only exercise that is, has been uh, scientifically associated with longevity. So don't feel like you're only going for a walk. Just go for a walk. In order to keep your immune system strong, you need to maintain a healthy weight. We've all heard a lot of information during this COVID time about people who are, are overweight or obese are having much more difficult time when they do get COVID. So that's kind of the proof that, you know, let's keep that weight off. Um, 
and you know, but by, by following the diet I'm talking about with whole, whole foods, fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, you really don't have to think about your weight because your body seems to self-control when you eat those foods. And I literally can get on the scale every day and I will not even be a tenth of a pound different um, day after day after day. So um, obviously we all know that if we're not getting good sleep, that our immune system doesn't work as well. I mean, I don't know how many of you have had the experience where you've stayed up really late or you were rolled, tossed and turned and the next morning you almost always don't feel good. So sleep is really important. Um, there's a lot of things you can do for sleep and I'll talk about a lot more of them uh, when I do the frequency um, presentations. But, you know, get the electronics out of your bedroom. That's really important. Um, room darkening shades. I just heard a story the other day of somebody who actually got room darkening shades and what a difference it made in their, her and her husband's sleep. So that actually works really well. Um, then you need to actually take a high quality probiotic. And if you look at the um, list that I put in the chat about supplements to take, you see a probiotic there. And I would never have believed that at one point in my life, but um, I have to tell you my story. So in, I think it was 2016, I started having a rash. Um, and eventually I had a rash that went from my toes to my head and all my hair fell out. And my friend works for this company called Microbiome Labs. And she's talking about how well this product works for skin stuff. And I'm going, why would, you know, I just wasn't educated enough. I'm going, why would probiotic work for my skin? Well, I've since become a lot more educated because she insisted that I take this probiotic and I was miserable. I literally, my life was walking from the bed to the couch for three months because I, I was so sick and I was so cold. And um, I started taking the probiotic and in May and by the end of the summer, I didn't have rash anywhere, but I didn't attribute it to the probiotic because my belief system wasn't where it is now. And I thought it was just that I'd made some changes in my diet. So I, um, I quit taking the probiotic because I was reading about another doctor's program. And so I started taking his probiotic at the end of August. And by the end of September, my rash was back. By the end of October, it was worse than it had ever been. And my, um, my friend ha happened to call and I said, oh my God, this rash is horrible. And she goes, I know you're not taking the probiotic because I know the probiotic works. <laughs> and so she said, I'm sending you another bottle and you need to start. Well, I had been getting worse and worse every day. And when I started taking this probiotic, I started getting better and better every day. And that was the end of the rash for me. It took a while, about six months before it was completely gone and I didn't have it anywhere. Um, but that probiotic literally, literally saved my life. And the guy that developed Microbiome Labs probiotic called Megaspore Biotic um, is a microbiologist who was working for other companies and his story is that his job was to go around the United States and find any probiotic that you could actually get, um, would actually get into the, the intestines. And he found that there wasn't a probiotic in the US that actually got through the stomach and into the intestines. So they would help a small amount, but they would not help a ton. So, he went around the world and he discovered in India that people were using the spores or the eggs rather than the little microbes in the capsules. And he developed a process for that. He's, this is the only company in the United States that manufactures probiotics, spore-based probiotics. So I put the link um, to Microbiome Labs in the chat earlier. It's, it's microbiomelabs.com slash register. You can see it there. And you can get their probiotic 
and that will really enhance your immune system. The other thing that they have is they have something called the Total Gut Restoration Package, which is three products. So it is, here's the Mega Spore Probiotic, and then here's a Mega Prebiotic, and this is a powder that you add. Um, and then there's a mega mucosa that comes in the same way as the prebiotic. And the stories about people healing things like fibromyalgia and the list just goes on and on. All the things that we know are autoimmune disease. Um, it's just, it's pretty amazing. And so I always like to share that with people because I know so many people are suffering from gut disorders. And that really helps. And I, I would, um, I will always recommend Megaspore because, you know, when something changes your life like that. Um, so, and then um, obviously supplements can really help you with your, um, with your goal to enhance your immune system and make sure you never have to deal with um, things like COVID. Um, so one of the things that I discovered, um, in the last couple of years is this wellness formula. And I think they probably have it at the co-op, but they also, I found it, I found it at the co-op in Virginia, Minnesota. Um, and I've also found it on Amazon. So there's ways to get it. It's just called wellness formula and you can see how pretty the bottle is. And a friend of mine turned me on to this. She, she said whenever she even just started to feel like she might be getting sick, she would triple the dosage for a couple of days and she would never get sick. And no, I've experimented with it. And so, you know, if you wake up with a scratchy throat or you wake up with, you know, the sniffles, I just triple that dose for a couple of days and it always works. Another thing com comes from Microbiome Labs. So you can get that from the same link I already shared. And this is called Megasidin. And Microbiome Labs um, developed this just for immune system enhancement. So it works very well also. So there's tons and tons and tons of things we can do. Like I said, there's too many things here for you to do them all. So if you would just just pick one or two that really strikes your fancy and start working on that immune system. So the other thing that I really like to use for my immune system is essential oils. And that's why I put the immune bomb in the chat. So that's actually a, a formula for an immune bomb. And, and it tells you with that formula exactly how to use it. So I'm thinking that 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 could be amazing. Now there's, there's like a number of essential oils there and you can find essential oils at the co-op. You can find essential oils with your friends. A lot of your friends are probably selling them. So there's, there's a lot of ways to get them. Uh, and um, I've had amazing experiences with essential oils. So I'm a huge fan. And the, uh, one of the essential oils that is in the immune bomb is called thieves. And, and thieves is absolutely amazing for the immune system. Back in the day of the bubonic plague, there were grave robbers and people who robbed the sick and dying that never got sick. And after the plague was gone and these people were caught, part of their sentence was to tell what they did to not get sick. Well, it turned out they were spice traders. And so they used five different spices and they didn't get sick. Well, those spices, the oils of those spices are in thieves. And so if a lot of times, if I'm just not feeling good, I'll put a drop of thieves in a, a little amount of water and then just gargle with it. Um, you know, if you start getting a sore throat, man, that takes care of it immediately. So, and, and a big part of what happens with, um, oils is that oils all have a vibration or a, a level of megahertz that they, they can present to your body. So a healthy body vibrates at 62 to 70 megahertz. A healthy brain vibrates at 72 to 82 megahertz. And 
a cold begins at 58 megahertz. So you've dropped, you've lost, you've lost, dropped your vibration to get have a cold. The flu begins at 57 and death begins at 25. So it's really important to know how to um, increase your vibration. So what, what lowers your frequency is stress and negative emotions, processed foods, pollutants, EMFs, doesn't that all make sense? We all know those things aren't, aren't good for us. But what increases your frequency is pretty interesting. Um, prayer and positive emotions can increase your frequency by 10 to 15 megahertz. Consuming green plants can increase your frequency by 15 megahertz. Herbs can increase your frequency from 22 to 27 megahertz. Now listen to this. Those were all pretty small numbers. Essential oils, their megahertz run from 52 to 450 megahertz. So lots of, lots of good possibilities for enhancing your immune system. Um, I often, like today, um, I had a little scratchy throat this morning, so I put some eucalyptus in my hand just rubbed it in a little bit and then cuffed my hands over my nose and just breathed it in really deeply because I could feel something in my lungs and it, I wasn't comfortable with it and it was gone. So it's, uh, it's amazing. I also do a lot of um, um, distilling with, with oils. So Obviously, keeping your body detoxed a little bit is going to enhance your immune system. So there's, we've already talked about a number of ways that you can detox, um, including juicing, lots of fruits and veggies, intermittent fasting. I don't know how many of you are familiar with intermittent fasting, but that's kind of one of the new things in the scientific world where you're by by going for 14 to 16 hours without any food uh, really makes a difference for your um, body and your immune system. And so intermittent fasting basically is, you know, you, you eat dinner at six. And so you wanna go, you don't wanna eat anything in the morning then till eight or 10, eight to 10. And they found that the 16 hours is the best, but 15 and 14 hours gives you benefit too. And when you first start, you might want to just take it easy because um, you're not used to it. So do, you know, do 12 hours and then work your way up to 14 and 16 hours. Um, I know people who do it every day and they don't even think about it anymore. Um, water fasting is, is another way to really kick up um, how your body's working. And that is by just like doing a water fast for a day, or I know people have done a water fast for weeks, but if you do decide to do any kind of fasting, a juice fast, a water fast, any kind of fasting, what you want to do is you want to um, just start slow. You know, maybe your fast is for six hours the first time uh, and see how your body reacts and then gradually build it up over time. Uh, obviously, if you're, if you can take a sauna, um, you know how, when you all that you're sweating that much, that's just a lot of your you're detoxing all kinds of things. So that's a, a good way to uh, detox exercise, because if you're exercising and sweating, again, you're pushing those toxins out through your um, sweat glands. And then there's there's something called the master cleanse and you can just Google master cleanse. Um, and that is like a 10 day where all you drink is a lemonade that is sweetened by it's fresh lemons and it's sweetened by maple syrup, a high quality maple syrup. And that will really detox you. And then massage. I mean, you always hear from your massage therapist, drink lots of water because They've moved things around in your body and detox toxins are going to start coming out. So that's why you have to do that. Um, you want to take steps. Obviously, we all know this like really well now to avoid infection. You know, we, we've heard this for the last two years. Avoid sick people. Wash your hands. Avoid hospitals and doctor's offices because that's where all the sick people are. <laughs> um, 
and you know, I think the one thing that we've learned in the last two years that's really going to make a difference is that when I was sick, when I had a job, I mean, I thought I was so important. I had to go there no matter what. And so I brought all my germs to the office. I think we've all learned that we shouldn't be doing that. And we're not, you know, even now I'm watching people get cold and flu and they're saying, no, I'm not going anywhere because I got a cold and I'm just going to stay home so I don't get somebody else sick. So I think it changed our mindset a little bit. So that was one good thing about the last two years. Um, you really need to minimize and deal with stress. Um, stress can be a killer. I mean, literally, it can be a killer. Um, if you have it for too long, I mean, you just you you will lose your your will to live. Um, so, you know, meditation for me is like one of my best things for stress relief. And not having a job anymore is another one, but you know, everybody can't do that. Um, so you can do yoga and Tai Chi. Yoga is awesome for stress relief. So is Tai Chi. Um, just walking or doing the thing that you personally like to do you know for some people it's fishing I mean they just when they're fishing they just their mind is just not you know they're just they're relaxed and their mind is not doing the worrying and all that stuff we do um walking can be such great stress relief because you're out in nature getting out in nature is good stress relief so it's kind of more what you like to do um that takes your mind away from um the stress a lot, of, a lot of people like to sew and for them that helps or crochet or knit. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, you just have to decide what works for you. The other thing that's really important is having a social life to keep your immune system strong. Um, there's been a number of longevity studies around the world and um, it turns out that this, your social life is a huge part of living well and living long. Um, and we all know that just because we all feel better when we've just been with our friends and laughed and done a number of those kinds of things. So you need to also find humor in life. And let me tell you, there's a lot of it around. So I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Norman Cousins, but Norman Cousins was diagnosed with a cancer and basically was told that he was going to die. And so he uh, got his doctors to agree to let him move across the, the road to a hotel. So he wasn't in a medical facility. And then for, I don't remember the amount of time for it, but I think it was over a month. All he did was watch comedies and laugh and laugh and laugh. And at the end of a, that time period, he was well. So isn't that fun? You can laugh your way to good health and laugh your way to a strong immune system. And then I know that vitamin D must have been on that supplement list because if it wasn't, it should have been. And in Minnesota, you know, we have to take vitamin D. I remember hearing a guy speak one time and he said, you know, there is no way for at least six to eight months of the year, we can get vitamin D from the sun here. So if you're not taking vitamin D, I mean, they found during COVID that people that got COVID, a lot of them had low vitamin D levels. So, and your doctor can check your vitamin D levels. So that would be, you know, one way to um, know where you are. My last physical, my vitamin D level was as high as it could be. So I was pretty pleased with that because that will keep me from getting disease. The other thing that nobody's talking a lot about is vitamin K27. So here's a, um, another thing from Mega, uh, Microbiome Labs. It's called Megaquinone, and it says on it K27. And what doctors are telling me is they're finding that 95% of the population is low in K27. So, you know, I, I have to tell you, I do take a handful of supplements every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you also um, want to use a non-toxic sunscreen uh, if you are using a sunscreen um, to get out of this, you know, to not burn. And 
but you still want to do 15 to 30 minutes a day completely without a sunscreen when it is nice outside. And you can do that better in the morning hours or the evening hours so that you don't burn. Um, and then once you get a base, I mean, I don't use sunscreen after I have a little bit of a base because I don't burn after that. You don't want to smoke because smoking obviously lowers our, our, our impacts our immune system greatly. Um, you want to drink in moderation because all of us have had the experience. Well, maybe not all of us. Some of us have had the experience of drinking more than we should. And we all know that it, it can lead to illness because our immune system gets uh, goes into the tank. So... And then there's two medical devices that I use, and I'm gonna go into a whole lot more detail of these in the next two sessions that I do, but I'm just gonna briefly tell you about it. One is called a Beamer, and that's B-E-M-E-R. And the Beamer actually increases your circulation by 30%. It increases your cell's ability to detox by 30%. It increases your... Um, um, your vasomotion by 30% and it increases your circulation, detoxing. I'm missing one. One other thing. Anyway, basically, when you start increasing your circulation, amazing things happen um, to all of us. So um, I would just suggest you look up what happens if you increase your circulation and you'll see that it's all kinds of wonderful things that we need. And as we grow older, our circulation gets much poorer. And so with that, you end out um, having things like numb hands, numb feet, uh, trouble with your um, organs, um, trouble with your brain. Uh, because if you're not, if you're not getting, getting enough blood to your brain, guess what happens? I think it's called dementia. So it's, um, it's an amazing device and it, it helps with sleep. It helps with stress relief. It intensifies nutrient absorption, which we talked about already that we need to absorb our nutrients. It increases your circulation. It increases your waste disposal, which is detoxing, which we've talked a lot about to enhance our immune system. Um, it builds up mental acuity and improves concentration. So you can remember to take your supplements. Um, it enhances endurance and increases your recovery time. So you can exercise and you can actually exercise more frequently when you're using one. The other device is called a Healy. And the Healy is a frequency device. Remember when I was talking about frequency and vibration? Um, so the Healy actually comes from Germany. And um, doctors over there have been using frequency to heal. And so they've discovered that, for example, 42 megahertz will take care of pain. And the Healy is FDA approved for pain relief. And it also helps with your sleep. It helps with stress relief. It helps with circulation and it helps with detoxing. All things that we mentioned. Um, so I will be going into a lot of detail in, I think, March on these frequency devices and what they do and how they can impact your life. Um, so that is in a nutshell, all of the things you can do to enhance your immune system. So I know that's a ton of information and I will do this seminar again because most of us only absorbed about 30% of it because it's a lot of information, but I would certainly love to hear if you have any questions um, about the stuff that I've shared. Feel free to unmute or um, put your questions in the chat if you have any questions or comments. Hi, well, how much is the Healy and the uh, the free uh, the other device, Bima? 
Uh, the Healy runs about, I mean, you can buy one for as little as 500. I don't recommend that because it only has like a quarter of what the high-end one has. Um, and the, the high-end one is about 1500. And the difference between the two is you actually can do an analysis and the device will tell you what you need today. So you know what your body needs the most out of all of the 120 or 130 programs there are. So it just tells you your body needs this today. And the Beamer, it runs around $6,000. So that one's a little pricier, but I'll tell you what, it, I, I have amazing stories that I'll share when I talk about it um, in, this, in March um, because I, I've just had, I've had so many amazing things happen because I, I use the Beamer. So we'll share, I'll share more about that later. Cool, thank you. When is it available? Is it online? No, it is uh, network marketing um, and you can contact me and I'll help you with that. Thank you. And my email is in the chat, but it's gene at worldwellnesseducation.org. Okay, I see a question here about the na name of the probiotics. Um, they're called mega spore biotic. And it's mega, mega spore is one word and biotic, B-I-O-T-I-C is separate. And the company they come from is Microbiome Labs. And the link where you can purchase these, normally you have to get them from a medical provider of some kind. Um, so if you decide to purchase them, um, email me. Uh, so I make sure, cause you have to start taking them a certain way because they work so well that if you just start taking the full dosage, you might have a detox reaction. So there's a special formula for how you begin taking them and gradually get your body used to them. So that you can just email me about if you decide you're going to buy them and you go on to the, um, to the uh, link and buy them, you can just email me and we'll communicate to make sure you're okay and you do it well. B12. Um, because I eat so many vegetables, I don't worry about specific vitamins. So I can't really answer um, B12. I know a lot of people are way low in B12 and that's something you can get tested. Oh, dairy in the diet. Everything I've learned is get it out of your diet. Now I have to tell you the truth. Cheese is more addictive than heroin and so man, that stuff just keeps creeping into my diet, <laughs> no matter how hard I try. But I do really, um, really wish I would get away from cheese. I did for about a year and then I let it sneak back in. So, okay, someone here says, why do you recommend juicing instead of using something like Vitamix to retain all the fiber and nutrients? So for, for a very long time, for a very long, for a very long time, I, um, I did both. I would start my day. The first thing I would have is juice. And the reason that you have juice is because remember, we're talking about digestion. Well, there's really no digestion with the juice. So those nutrients go immediately to your um, cell. And if they go immediately to your cell, you're getting that boost first thing in the morning. Then I would wait till I was hungry and I would use my Vitamix and I would do a smoothie. Um, I got away from smoothies just because I was just tired of them after doing them for years and years and years. Um, so I haven't been doing smoothies lately, but I still juice every morning. And then I eat a, um, my breakfast is all vegetables. So, you know, it's, it's pretty good, but um, I, I really like to chew, not just drink the smoothie. So um, let's see. I see somebody says there's vegan cheese that tastes very good. Yeah, well, I've always had to make everything I do because I'm staying away from 
processed food, but if it's organic vegan cheese and, you, and the ingredients are all real food, I'll have to try it. So Jennifer, have you seen any other questions that I missed? Uh, nope, I think you got all of them. Oh, so do you think people should stay away from meat? Let me just tell you a story. Um, there is a study called the China study. And the China study was done by uh, T, T. Colin Campbell. And uh, they were finding in China that, that kids, especially kids from wealthier families were all having liver cancer. And so he was doing a study to figure it out. And he discovered that he thought that what the problem was, was they ate a lot of peanuts and peanuts have something on them called aflatoxin and aflatoxin causes liver cancer. And so he did a study with mice and he, he was a scientist, did scientific studies for 40 some years. And this was the only time he had 100% results. So he fed he had 100 mice, split them into two groups. Um, 50 of the 50 mice were fed a plant-based diet and 50 were, plant, uh, were fed an animal-based diet. And 100% of the plant-based, oh, and that was after he gave them a shot of aflatoxin. And 100% of the plant-based um, diet mice did, did not get cancer. And 100% of the animal um, based diet, got cancer. And then he was able to actually reverse it by um, feeding the plant-based mice animal products and fe feeding the animal-based ba mice plant-based product. And he started reversing the cancer. So that's how important diet is. And, you know, when you think 100% of the mice got, now, obviously they aren't humans, right? Um, so I still do, I, I eat a very small amount of meat. Um, if I go fishing and we catch fish, I'll eat the fish I caught because I think that I shouldn't be catching it if I'm not gonna eat it. And if um, someone happens to give me a package of venison, I will eat venison. But those are like maybe four times a year kind of things. And otherwise I'm strictly plant-based except for cheese. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. I also see somebody mention apple cider vinegar capsules or drink a shot straight or hot water with lemon and honey. And I have to tell you, I have apple cider vinegar every day. And what I will do is if I'm, if I'm not having anything else that calls for apple cider vinegar in it, I'll just add it to my juice, my green juice. And that way it just, it's like having a salad in a glass because you got a little vinegar in there. Oh, somebody's asking me a question I don't think I know the answer to. All I know is I don't have a B12 deficiency and I don't eat meat. <laughs> How frequently do you have to fast? Oh, I think, let me, let me go back to, let's see, I missed something. How frequently do I have to fast? Um, you know, if you do intermittent fasting, you know, I have a friend who does that five days a week and then doesn't do it on the weekend so that she can have meals with her family. Um, any fasting you do is beneficial. Um, the frequency is going to be up to you. Uh, a lot of people say you should do a big fast, like uh, every quarter. Um, I think all of this is individual and you have to see how your body feels with fasting. Um, let's see, how frequently do you fast? Apple cider vinegar, um, ulcerative colitis. There's a question here about um, ulcerative colitis. I believe ulcerative colitis is an autoimmune disease. Um, and I believe that the Megaspore total gut restoration package would help that significantly. The microbiologist that designed the total gut re 
um, restoration uh, says that 98% of what's wrong with the human condition is caused by the gut. So healing your gut can make a huge difference. Um, how much daily? I usually do apple cider vinegar. I'll do, I mean, I don't measure it. I just take the bottle and pour it into my glass. So I'm assuming it's about a tablespoon that I take. Um, so not to say that's the perfect dosage. That's just what I take. And you know what? I never get sick, just so you know. <laughs> and I still have cancer. Remember, it hasn't gone away. <laughs> Okay, I think I've got them all, unless you have more. So I know that we're having a recording of this and Jen, I would really love the recording link. And I know that Jen said in the, that you just have to let her know that you want the recording. Yep, I'll put my email in one more time for anybody who um, might have missed it. It's just easier for me to get you folks to email me versus me trying to capture all of these emails through the <laughs> through the chat. So rather than giving me your email, just email me at jgilbertson at wholefoods.coop. And once I have the link to the recording, I will email that out to anyone who's interested. And Jean shared a ton of information. So um, all of it has been captured today. I am going to also share that list again of supplements and the immune bomb. So there is that list one more time for those of you who maybe missed it. Thanks, Jen, for being such a great moderator. Of course, it's my pleasure. All right, does anyone else have anything they'd like to ask or add? Now is the time. Nutritional yeast is really high in vitamin B12. That's good to well, know. That, that must be where I get mine from because I use a lot of nutritional yeast. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're not familiar with nutritional yeast, it's a um, non-active yeast, so you wouldn't be able to, to use it to make bread or anything, but it's used often for um, its cheesy, nutty flavor. So people put it on popcorn or in different dishes. Um, and yeah, it's it's a really wonderful product. Yes, I love it on popcorn. Absolutely love it on popcorn. The multivitamin on, on Amazon is called Wellness Formula. Can you see this? Yep. Okay, it's called Wellness Formula. Um, and it just says advanced immune support is what it says on the front of it. And the ingredients are, if I can find my glasses, I would read them to you. There they are. The ingredients are a lot of the things we've talked about. Um, it's like uh, different, different herbs, uh, kudzu, mullein leaf, angelica root, astragalus root, you know, all of these great things. And then it has uh, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D3, calcium, zinc, selenium, copper, sodium, garlic, propolis, which you saw in the, in the supplements, echinacea, elderberry, 
Um, and the list goes on and on and on. So it's it's got, you know, a lot of the things that when I started learning from alternative practitioners, things to do if you got COVID, most of those things are things they talk about. How does Laughrin help the immune system? I didn't hear that question. Um, how does Laughrin help the immune system? Laughing? Oh. Yes, you mentioned before, uh, previously. Yeah, laughing. Well, it literally, when you feel good, when you feel good, your body reacts. I mean, when you when you think, you know, if you're if you're sitting and thinking negative thoughts, you can notice that in your body and you can get yourself out of that mood by using positive thoughts. So your body reacts to the negative and the positive. And so laughing is definitely positive. And along with um, just having your body feel better, it just seems to help. Thank you. That's good to know. Ha, I, I bet it does because you're moving. Laughing increases circulation, someone said. Oh, that's very interesting. Laughing makes your diaphragm massage your liver, which makes your system work better. Thank you. You guys are all so smart. Uh, there was one more question about nutritional yeast as a processed food. Um, basically, nutritional yeast is deactivated yeast. And um, so it is processed to a degree. But um, yeah, it's I, it's certainly not a whole food. <laughs> right. Well, you have to understand that the goal is to eat, you know, mostly whole food. And you know, I will occasionally buy something like a canned spaghetti sauce. Okay, but it's in a jar. First of all. Second of all, it's organic. And thirdly, I know what every ingredient is, and I don't have to look them up. <laughs> It's like organic tomatoes, organic herbs. Um, so, you know, because all of us have busy lives and trying to create all of your food from scratch sometimes is impossible. So when you have to use a processed food, use an organic one. And I like to make sure there's no more than five ingredients. And there's nothing like spices, which could be anything. Um, there's some things that are on food labels that can, I mean, literally could be arsenic. You don't know because they don't have to tell you what it is. They just say spices. So um, it's, it's important to eat as close to the plant as you possibly can. And sometimes we can't do that, but sometimes we can. Yep, if you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> Yeah, and someone says here, you should be able to go around the grocery store and buy the ingredients and the processed foods you're buying. You should, but sometimes it's just a matter of time. What's the best rice to eat? Well, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. A lot of people would say you shouldn't eat any rice. Um, some people would say you shouldn't eat dark rice, brown rice. Some people would say you should eat what you shouldn't eat white rice. So it's one of those things that, that's hard to answer because there's so many answers to that. Well, oh, what's my feeling on potatoes? I absolutely love potatoes. And you can go and look up a diet that's good for your gut and Cold potatoes, cold root vegetables are really good for your gut. And if you remember right, um, the microbiologist said that taking care of your gut is going to eliminate 98% of what's wrong with the human condition. And so I actually add to my diet a lot of things that are specifically good for your gut buddies, because what he says is that you are actually 46% human 
and 54% microbes. And so you have to take care of your gut buddies because they're a big part of you. Um, and the, the potatoes that I mentioned, I said cold potatoes, that's not actually true. It's like a cooked potato that has cooled off. So once it cools off, it changes the potato so it's good for your gut buddies. You can heat it back up again then if you want to. What, what, how I get cold potatoes in my diet is that I love a cold baked potato on a salad. So when I bake potatoes for one meal, I'm gonna have a warm one. And then I might make three more to just add to my salad over the rest of the week because they're filling. I, and I eat a big salad for lunch every day. Yes, the potatoes are a prebiotic. You're right. Okay, I just added to the chat um, Jean's next two classes. So the frequency healing class will be February 17th at 10 a.m. And frequency devices class will be March 24th, 10 a.m. Both of those are um, Thursday classes. So you can find them through Eventbrite or also through the co-op website, which I will add one more time. And sorry, that was me with the background noise. I was going through my calendar. <laughs> All right, well, does anyone else have any other questions, anything else to add? Well, I'm getting a lot of thank yous and I just wanted to thank you all because I love talking about this stuff and my relatives don't like listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to have you. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for attending today's class. I hope you um, got a lot of information out of it. And again, please email me directly if you are interested in receiving the recording, which will be downloaded and available later today. Um, otherwise, hopefully we'll see you for our next classes. And again, check out the full line of co-op classes, all of which are virtual and free. Um, even if and when we can return to being in person for our classes, we will continue to offer them virtually as well. So you can look forward to all of them in some way, shape or form. <laughs> so everyone, thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take care. Get yourself some immunity boosters. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Have a wonderful Thanks. day. Thank you. Bye-bye.